Hi, welcome to a new episode of Sportsy. Let's talk sports. Today we have with us an Indian former swimmer who specialized in middle distance freestyle event. He represented India at 2000 Summer Olympics. Hakim Uddin Habibullah. Hakim competed in the men's 200 meter freestyle at 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney. He received a university place for FINA at the entry time of 1.56. He challenged four other swimmers in the heat one, including Uzbekistan two-time Olympian Oleg. Hakim was co-founder of Go Sports India Private Limited, a sports management company based in Bangalore, which works towards development of young talent in Olympic sport. He was also the founder trustee of Go Sports Foundation today, which is one of the biggest for athletic management and for sports foundation in India, having more than 150 athletes that support uh, at multiple sports. Hakim is currently the founder and the principal consultant for sports performance at Winning Matter Consulting Private Limited, as well as Mills Pool India Private Limited. Please welcome. Indian 2000 Sydney Olympian whose journey so far has been the creation of Go Sports India Private Limited Go Sports Foundation and the one who will be discussing with us how winning matters Hakimuddin Khalbulla Hi Hakim uh, it's uh, great to have you on Sports See Let's Talk Sports and uh, it's uh, a pleasure to have a uh, former Indian Olympian uh, on swimming uh, which has been your special category of middle distance freestyle uh, It's great to have you here, and we, while we talk about your journey around uh, of Sydney Olympic 2000, uh, we just want to first welcome you and uh, looking forward to hear the journey uh, in your own words about how it all started. So great to have you here. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so Kim, as uh, as uh, I get to host people, uh, amazing achievers like you, and I always ask the first question to them. is to ask about the journey and i know this may be asked to you many times many times but as as a consolidated chat i just want to know about how actually your swimming started uh, because it was not something very known in early 90s to get into swimming and make career out of it and uh, but you went ahead and did that so how it actually started and uh, what what got you into it so again you like you said you know it's a common question and um, you know it's a question which it's very important at the time when i started uh, you know my life was a series of fortunate accidents it's a common phrase that you might hear from me but uh, even my introduction to the water began by accident and when i say accident there are two things that happened one there was actually an accident where one of my schoolmates you know uh, drowned and so my parents thought that i would be safer if i was taught you know swimming and if i was if i enjoyed and engaging with the water safely so it started with that and then second was the fact that my parents didn't come with any sporting background they had no you know context of swimming so you know they they just took me to a pool i would splash around if there was a pool close to home i was lucky that way and when i would come back home i would be a good kid so i was supposedly a naughty kid and uh, so what it helped calm me down you know it was I, i came home and asked for food i slept well and i think that's a dream for many parents yeah. and so these two things you know literally you know um, kind of motivated my parents to uh, allow me to play with the water and since i was enjoying uh, another accident that happened was uh, the place i was playing and enjoying uh, shut down and uh, i was i was then uh, taken to another place where we bumped into swimmers that used to come in um you know after the public batch to for competitive swimming and that's where we got curious even since i was enjoying the water i was introduced to it uh, i decided to you know my parents thought i should learn the strokes so one thing led to another i learned the strokes and because i had a good feel for the water i i guess i learned faster and uh, you know and, in, and i was introduced to a competition landed up winning one you know a minor medal there and that excited everyone in the ecosystem you know and my parents who had no reference so so then it, you just got sucked into the black hole of uh, you know sport and and yeah I, i was just just moving along winning winning one medal moving to the next competition trying to see what i could do and 
one thing led to another. First nationals didn't win anything, just made finals. The following nationals, uh, in a, you know, won one medal after two years. That was, you know, where I mean, swimming has these two year age categories. So, or had at that point of time. So, every alternate year, I would have an opportunity to, you know, win a medal. And uh, it kept getting, you know, so it was from finals. The next, after two years, it was a silver. Two years later, it was a gold. And then, you know, started building up. So, that's how, that was how, you know, um, Swimming kept pulling me deeper and deeper. Uh, <laughs> literally. Into, yeah, quite literally. And and uh, in parallel, see, for us, at least where I came from and from the family, we came from very humble, big, you know, from very humble set of uh, backgrounds. So so for us, sport was, was always meant to be a very, uh, was meant to be a hobby. And uh, academics was always primary. So... It was very clear for my for my brother and me that we could continue playing sport as long as we did well in education. So, so yeah, I had many many uh, critical inflection points, you know, that many of us I'm sure have faced uh, playing sport. So, you know, around the tenth standard, what do you do? You know, and and th those are the times when we chose to continue playing sport and swim. So tenth, twelfth, you know, crazy set of uh, challenges trying to balance both many and then subsequently chose engineering uh, you know to, to pursue engineering and uh, you know and, and, and try to find that balance between yeah. academics and sport so so that was how uh, you know things began and um, yeah it was quite a quite an interesting journey yeah and uh, I think I'm, I'm sure what what you went through with, uh, as you said, the education had to be balanced and uh, the swimming was something that happened and it actually got you there. So not all the accidents are bad as uh, and some accidents are really good and we got an Olympian uh, because of such things. So uh, great, to, great to see that. Uh, and, and, and that's the reason I always say, you know, my life is a series of fortunate accidents. You know? Yes. So I've <laughs> so yeah. been lucky that way. So it's and and uh, uh, we are lucky that those fortunate accidents uh, did happen uh, for us to uh, have a, have this nice chat with with somebody who got to wear the India jersey for India jersey at the Olympia. Represent the when you go there and you know the flag is flying and not many people in the category from the country. That means you know the flag is flying for you and because of you. So that's a different feeling. So just to talk about that, uh, Akim, how how was that feel when you got to? Uh, the summer, summer Olympic 2000 in Sydney and actually had a really good hit uh, uh, leading leading to the to the to the races. So how was that feel? And did you uh, actually got intimidated uh, going at such a big world stage and uh, not having the big history of Indian swimmers uh, going all the way there? So you know the lead up to the Olympics was. Um... Okay, so let me just give perspective, right? So until 1998, you know, when uh, uh, I was just trying to figure out that balance between academics and sport, for me, the Olympics was not a priority, not on the radar. Uh, it, you know, it was only in 1998 when I was aiming for the Asian Games as the grand finale for me to then retire at the grand old age of probably 18 or 19, you know, it's like saying, okay, you're done now, you can focus on your studies. Uh, it didn't happen, you know, that dream ending did not happen. So as again, uh, the fortunate accident, I was not chosen to be part of the team. And um, that was, you know, what triggered the motivation to then go to the Olympics, because for me then, the only thing that was bigger than the Asian Games was the Olympic Games. And that was for the first time that I chose to aim at that level. And, and it was that lead up to the Olympics, which was extremely challenging. I was in my fifth and sixth semester of engineering. I had to figure out how to manage that. And, um, and so just getting to the Olympics was a massive, massive, massive challenge. I was literally traveling with my books and, you know, uh, and, and wait. so eventually when I did make it to the team, it was a, a very, very, very big achievement, not only for me, but it was for my whole ecosystem, you know, because while you, see, you know, people see my face in the newspaper or hear my name, it's, uh, I stand on the shoulders of uh, 
many people, you know, and starting with my family. So, so it was, an, it, it, was it was a massive milestone, you know, for everyone. And uh, getting to the Olympics, I remember, yeah, it was it was definitely the biggest stage. You know, I think it it does uh, intimidate every athlete, you know, who goes in. And uh, so I remember the first few days of the games village, you're like just starstruck, like a kid in a candy store. You're like in the midst of the greatest athletes, the greatest celebrities of the world. You know, everyone's in the games village for me. Uh, Sydney Olympic Games was called the celebration of humanity, and it truly really was. You know, where you you have the best of the world in one place. So it was it was very intimidating. It was um, mind blowing, and I remember just running around with an autograph book, trying to get people's autographs. But that lasted for the first probably two three days, and. Once things started settling down, you realize that, wait a minute, you're as good as everyone else, you know, because it, I, I must tell you that that realization was partly even the way the other athletes made you feel, the way the whole environment made you feel, because in the Games Village, for example, the athlete is king and every athlete, irrespective of whether you're a celebrity and a world record holder or an Olympic gold medalist, or you're just a qualifier to the Olympics, every athlete is treated equal. And each athlete respects the other athlete for being the best from their environment and their countries. So, so that was what really built that, you know, feeling that I'm actually the same, you know, we're all the same. And it's just that some are probably either born, you know, in a better environment or some are privileged to have a better environment that allows them to go a little further. But uh, otherwise, we all have gone through a certain journey to be there. So, so, so after that realization, everything changed, you know, for me. And uh, you know, you suddenly see yourself differently. You feel different. You and and you get that, you know, vibes back to you. So, so while the initial feeling was daunting, but then you settle in and you know you feel honored to be part of a very select group of athletes, of people. So um, that was the general outlook. And then of course you have the event, you know, the day of my race, being there, just knowing that, you know, your, your whole, your family, friends, and the world is looking at, the, at you and you have this opportunity. It was great. The, the, for me at that stage of time, I had no pressure because I was not competing for any medals. You know, but it was just about being there, feeling the presence of that, you know, feeling that aura of the environment, you know, that and soaking it in. Yeah. For me, that was all the special moments. And uh, I, th I think uh, the heats were good too. Uh, it, obviously, it didn't, uh, it's not about the final the result would have, uh, was not something in uh, that we got, but I think uh, the whole lead of that, as you explained, was pretty good. And uh, that's what the whole uh, people to understand that I think the Olympics is not about only about the medal. It's about the, how the journey of the athlete is, is the ultimate dream that you actually achieve when you get to represent your country at that level. And uh, as I said earlier, that uh, the flag is flying for you and because of you. So I think it's a it's a different pride. Uh, but uh, uh, during the journey and uh, pre and post. Uh, there been uh, swimming not being a prominent sport or the frontline sport in India. What kind of obstacles that you actually came across, like about the infrastructure or accessibility of coaches and give, having the right uh, the funding and all those things, right? The, so, what were the top obstacles that you actually came across? So I think the, the biggest challenge, like I said, uh, you know, in a, in a different context, was we just didn't aim high enough. We didn't even know what we could go where we could go. So honestly, if I did not, if I'd made, made it to the Asian Games, I would have been happy with that and I would have, you know, stopped competing. It was because that didn't happen that led me to push myself to a different level and aim higher. So the first biggest challenge for um, many of us was just the lack of, um, you know, aspiring to be better. We didn't even know what we were capable, capable of. So that was the first fundamental. Then of course, you know, uh, because only when you want to aim higher will you start asking for better facilities, you'll ask for more funding, you'll ask for better coaching. 
But if you don't even know where you want to go, and if you don't even have those benchmarks established, uh, anything is okay. And yeah. people, and and so, so yes, I mean, you know, I don't want to dive into all the challenges because there were tons of challenges, you know, there were so, but like I said, um, I know many people who have probably lesser facilities, but are achieving more. It's, it's just because, you know, they've set a benchmark that is world-class and then they go for it and they make the best of what they have. Right. But I, I'm, I'm sure that whatever the, the, the learning that you had and whatever that you could pass on in the whole journey of after swimming, getting retired, taking retirement, coming back to sports with the uh, Go Sports uh, company and Go Sports Foundation, supporting Veer Dhawal and, uh, uh, and Sandeep in the journey and them they getting those kind of acc accolades. I think uh, there's a proud feeling that you actually uh, started something uh, that revolution that started and actually we saw something uh, materializing. So how was that proud feel that you had about being an athlete, setting the benchmark, coming back to the community, building something like Go Sports, which is one of the most promising uh, uh, foundation and athlete management company in India uh, from, the foundation, uh, from the foundation perspective and uh, inspiring somebody like Veer Dhawal and Sandeep. So how does that feel? So, you know, post the Olympics, after finishing engineering, you know, I took a break and went and worked with the IT company, TCS. And it was five years, uh, you know, into it that I chose, or I, again, it was another set of accidents that led me to, you know, led me back to India and led me to following, um, you know, my heart of, and the belief that I had that India has world-class talent in sport. So I was lucky again to have some very, you know, uh, high quality school schoolmates with whom I had the opportunity to start this because honestly at that point of time uh, it was very very important that even for me to make that take this big decision of moving to sport I needed a certain quality of people that I needed to be working together with so I was again lucky to have that and uh, you know when we got started I remember being you know having I mean, being present at the nationals where Vithavar Khadi broke my national record. So my national record in the 200 meter freestyle or the best in performance as it's called stood for six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2006, while I was there at the nationals, Vithavar went and bettered it very narrowly. Mm -hmm. When he came out of the water, he looked different because, you know, what's difficult to gauge in a, um, you know, a chat like this is I'm um, only five feet, six inches tall. Yeah. And I, I have a foot size of seven and a half. So, you know, I, I wasn't physically gifted, you know, with, um, you know, the, the way normally people perceive world-class swimmers to be. <laughs> and here we had Vidhaval who walked out, who was at the age of 15, six feet tall, looked like a world-class swimmer. And we said, okay, you know, let's, let's start the company with him. So yeah. while many, many told us that, you know, uh, you should have started a company, you know, a sports company with a cricket player. <laughs> uh, we were mad enough to start a company with a swimmer. And uh, the core belief that we had at Go Sports, you know, both as an, you know, uh, as a private limited company to begin with, and then the foundation was, we had world-class talent. It was just that the world-class talent uh, needed to be, again, given the right benchmarks, and then be give, you know protected or you know we needed to create a high performance bubble between the athlete and coach right. to unlock that potential that they had. So it was just that very simplistic focus. We worked with athletes while we started with with Vithavu and we worked with a few swimmers like Sandeep Sejwal. We worked with many of the top athletes in various other Olympic sports right. as well with the idea that you know we wanted to unlock the Olympic potential that India had. And and. Uh, and that's where we first started as a private limited company. And then, you know, a couple of years later in 2008, started the Go Sports Foundation, uh, the same set of founders who came, you know, who started the foundation as well. Because we, at that point, we found that many athletes who were really talented, again, didn't come with backgrounds of, or, you know, and themselves with strong backgrounds or financial backgrounds and needed financial support. So that's where the foundation started to, to begin that part of the journey. So. It's amazing to see how it's grown from strength yeah. to strength. You know, I had, 
I, I like I say, I, I, I helped him sow the seeds initially, but you know, it's fantastic to see how you know the foundation has grown and uh, the team has taken it to you know great heights. And I've, I've seen the journey as uh, Dipti's a dear friend and uh, Mr. Kamat, I'll get to speak to him. Opportunity to host so many uh, Go Sports athletes, out almost 150, 160 roster of them, at least 15, 16 have come on board. Dipti was here on my platform and uh, it's it's amazing culture that was built. I think that, that what you spoke about, and you just started to see then it actually come into full blossom tree. And I think that is what uh, the whole culture building, it's, it's which required a start has happened. And uh, from there, uh, uh, you have moved on uh, and started something called Winning Matters. And uh, beyond Winning Matter, it is uh, you also the MD of uh, Mirth Pools in India. So how, what kind of things that you're actually doing in Winning Matters? How are you working on the mental side of people, leadership people, coaching people? And at the same time, uh, a giant, uh, the world giant uh, for who builds the pools for the Olympic level and getting them to India, for a country like India, where we are still talking about uh, swimming is a privilege. Uh, so how are how is this past phase of your next career move is uh, working towards uh, and what kind of impact that you want to make from this? So, so, you know, when we first started Go Sports, the journey was about, you know, creating the proof of concept that India has uh, the athletic ability. You know, because many in that question whether we have the athletic ability to be world class in sport. So, so with the so that's when, like I mentioned, we worked at a micro level. You know, with the athletes and coaches to create that you know environment of excellence around them. Once that was created at a micro level, the winning matters came into play because we realized that while the athletes had moved up pretty quickly, there was a big gap at a macro level. So the environment had to be unlocked. And so winning matters basically got created with the aim of how do you enable the larger ecosystem, the macro ecosystem. So how do you, you know, enable uh, people who the decision makers in government, in federations, industry, education institutions, and media to be able to look at sport at you know differently and and then contribute towards the larger uh, development or pipeline creation for talent. So that's where the, the that's where Winning Matters came in. We came in with the objective or the vision to make sporting participation and excellence an integral part of Indian culture. You know, that was a larger vision with two very simple objectives, right? I mean, one was how do we get India in the top three of the Olympic Games? And how do we enable a billion people to enjoy playing sport? So the base of the pyramid and then the top of the pyramid. So we initial years of Winning Matters was about, you know, I had a, a, how do we create, how do we work with the key decision makers? So we worked with, we consulted with various stakeholders uh, in central government, state governments, putting policy strategy, and trying to really relook at the picture, you know, disrupt things. Uh, we created a sports performance index along, you know, uh, uh, along with Fiki, IM Bangalore, and, and we create, and, and based on which we created a sports performance assessment of Indian states, national sports federations. So many different things to start benchmarking and setting the right standards for you know people to even understand where they stand. Then came the, the you know in 2013 we came to an inflection point where because while we had done some very interesting work we questioned about um, how that how was that being implemented at the ground level. So while we were you know being able to influence certain level of policy and strategy we found that there was still a big gap in its conversion to the grassroots or to the ground level. So in 2013, we went back to the drawing board and asked the question that what needs to be done if you want to see faster change. That's when we realized that, you know, we had to start focusing in a certain area. And when we looked at different angles uh, of intervention, we, you know, we stumbled upon the fact that swimming itself, you know, as a sport, had massive opportunities. And uh, so far we were only looking at it in a very micro context. And when we started looking at it in a much larger perspective, we realized that swimming had a very big um, impact at multiple levels. So that's when we decided to start Swimming Matters as a brand under Winning Matters to focus on the marketplace for swimming. And we derived the objectives from the, from the 
from winning matches. So we said, okay, how do we make you know aquatic or um, swimming participation and excellence an integral part of Indian culture? And then with the two fundamental objectives of how do we uh, get a billion people to enjoy swimming safely and co correctly, and then how do we enable uh, you know gold medals at the Olympic Games in swimming? So mm -hmm. simple derivations. <clears throat> Many people question me saying, Hakim, what's the correlation between, you know, you, 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 winning matters was aiming at get, being in the top three of the Olympic Games, and then you need to choose swimming as a focus area. How does that kind of correlate? And the simple answer to that was, you know, swimming for, you know, uh, has the maximum number of medals to win at the Olympic Games. Right. So swimming itself has a bucket of 35 gold medals. Then you have the other aquatic sports like diving, artistic swimming, you, you know, open water swimming and uh, water polo that add up to 49 gold medals, one more than athletics. So aquatic sports has the highest number of gold medals to win. And then you have, then we, and, and something we learned subsequently was that, you know, when you connect sports, the other sports connected with water beyond this, you then have close to a hundred gold medals. So I'm talking about sports like triathlon, modern pentathlon, surfing, kayaking, canoeing, sailing. So many of the other sports that are in and on water uh, for which swimming is a good base, you suddenly realize that they're close to a hundred gold medals at the Olympics, which correlates to little, little, I mean, little less than one third of the medals at stake. Yeah. So it's a massive chunk. Now, within that, to take a very specific case and study, you look at the US and the US in, in Rio in 2016 and in uh, 2012 in London, they won 16 gold medals, only in swimming, not even in diving, water polo. Just out of just the swimming pool, they won 16 gold medals. So if, so if USC swimming was a country by itself, you know, they would be in the top six in the world on the medal table. So that's the kind of impact that swimming can have as a single sport. Then it also has the ROI, right? I mean, you know, from the ROI from a sporting context, you're looking at, you know, can, how many medals can one athlete get you? And, yes. and swimming has the maximum ROI. So looking at all of these things, you know, at the competitive angle, swimming really made sense. And then when you look at the larger context, we, and, uh, you know, we realized that swimming has, is a sport that can be done by everyone young or old, you know, able-bodied, differently abled, um, whether they are, um, you know, rich or poor, male, female. So it cuts across almost every uh, demography. And yeah, it's a fundamental life skill. So there was no reason why that every Indian should not love engaging with the water. So it gave a larger purpose for what we did. And... Uh, and so swimming matters basically was where, you know, was created to unlock this marketplace, the potential that it had. And um, like I said, activating this, this uh, massive audience base that we have, you know, we have, and we have lots of water bodies. So we have swimming pools, which are not fully utilized. And then you have large water bodies, so whether it's the rivers, lakes, the coastline, you know, which remain underutilized. So, so that's when we, we, when we, you know, when we got deeper into it and we started working into the domain and asking the fundamental questions of how do you activate, you know, the environment and improve the quality and quantity of participation. <clears throat> we found that, you know, there was a lot of work to be done. We started with uh, student teachers. So, you know, like any subject, if you love the subject, uh, you know, the teacher often has a role to play. So we said, you know, the reason why we found uh, many people compromised in their swimming skills or not enjoying the water was because the way they were taught. So taking that, you know, taking that, we decided to upskill the quality of teachers. We partnered with an Australian organization to improve that quality of teachers. We began training them. And that's been an amazing journey so far. We've had over 400 teachers uh, trained across India. We, you know, had... Uh, four Olympians, which include Veer Dhawal and Sandeep Sejwal in it, who've also gone through the swim teacher training programs themselves and recognize how important it is to introduce the right skills to children at a very young age and also in, you know, ensure that that process is fun and enjoyable. 
So, so starting with that, when, when, we, when we just went around, uh, you know, we found the next part, which was the hardware, right? I mean, the swimming pools that, they, you know, the people were teaching in were not appropriately created. So that's, that forced us to start looking at the hardware. So as an engineer, uh, or as an engineer, you know, you, you're just constantly looking at that balance between the hardware and the software. So we started with saying, okay, there are existing hardware swimming pools. How do you improve the outcomes by improving the quality of software? And software for us are people, programs, policies. So by influencing that, how do you improve the outcomes? And then, like you know, you know, the minute the software reaches a certain level, you need to upgrade the hardware. So that's where the question of hardware came up: how do we improve the quality of swimming pools, right from the way they're designed to the way they're built, so that you know, there's more purpose and performance in, in even the base hardware. And, and that led us to look at, um, you know, what is the best of that, you know, available around the world. And we stumbled upon Martha Pools being the world leader for it, bringing a very different technology, again, different from an Indian context, but well established globally. And, uh, and that's where the journey with Martha began. Uh, once that, you know, we, people started understanding, respecting, and we began building a certain number of pools. We created a great example at the Padukone Bravid Center for Sports Excellence. That was our, that's the first pool that was built, which is home to India's top swim team today. Two out of the three Olympians that went to Tokyo, you know, had the benefit of training out of that pool. So, so you know, the dots are getting connected, you know, with everything we do, because we realized that infrastructure was very, very important. You know, and the more I saw it, I realized that uh, if you want high quality training and high quality events, the infrastructure makes a big difference. So, so this is where, you know, at some point, my love for engineering and my love of swimming has come together. I'm, you know, um, and, when, and, and as we started getting more uh, high quality pools, uh, you know, under the belt, uh, it led to the next phase of being um, requested to set up the subsidiary in India and head it, you know, so, so it's a quite a, it's, it's, it's quite a, you know, it's still a long way to go, but it's, yeah. it's been a fun journey so far. And like I said, it's, it's a lot of it is organic. You know, you, you do one thing, you see another problem or you see a pro another problem area, which is then an opportunity you try to you try to build that, and so it's an it's a it's a continuous journey of uh, you know improving the fundamentals, right. both the hardware and the software, so that um, you know we reach our objectives. And like I said, there's a the the objectives are get a billion people to enjoy engaging with the water safely and correctly, and uh, and now the larger objective is how do we enable you know Indian athletes. Um, uh, engaging with water to win Olympic gold medals. I, I think it's a, it's a, a I think it's a, it's a plan with the right intent and the right vision. And I think you have all the ammunition to make it happen because of your own experience and the whole ecosystem that you have built over time. Uh, so Hakim, I, I'm just coming to the last part of uh, uh, today's chat. I, I, I wish and I hope that we get to chat more and more. But just for today, uh, with the time, time constraint is... Uh, Throughout the journey that you had, uh, you as an athlete, then making other athletes, founding something like Go Sports, winning matters, so swimming matter. What has been these three words? The, what what do what what do what does these three words mean to you? Aspiration, inspiration, motivation. So for me, these are the foundations of you know waking up every day and being able to you know. Um, pursue your goals irrespective of what challenges are thrown your way. So I think when we all take up uh, or, or choose to do something considered to be different and, uh, you know, you don't have too much ahead of you to benchmark and you have to create your path. So, you know, these three words for me from that foundation. So uh, I feel they're very, very important for it everyone who's trying to make a change and uh, in what way they pursue. So, you know, there's a path that each of us are choosing to take and, uh, you know, so whatever that may be, I think these are very, very fundamental. Yes. And 
one one uh, on the same line the uh, the question is is like what what is your vision of uh, india being a sporting nation see for me it's uh, i believe if we can get you know a billion people to enjoy playing sport i think everything will happen automatically after that so whether it is about you know making viable career options you know creating the marketplace uh, having leagues having fans having everything will happen you know as a byproduct of a sporting nation and then eventually even olympic success so that for me is the largest aim i believe that everyone should do because if we keep it restricted only to a few people everyone will sit on a couch and clap and watch yes so so i believe that you know we all need to do a bit to to activate and and make sure that uh, every indian has the opportunity to play sport or or have an active life yes. and if they're able to you know have an active and healthy life and you know and get the opportunity to play sport i think will be unstoppable and and we really want it to be unstoppable and uh, i i everything i think all the podium finishes will be the byproduct if we have 1 billion people uh, playing playing sport seriously uh, as we always close uh, our chat on one note which is like uh, one message or one advice that you got that actually changed your life that you want to pass on to the next generation what that could be Stay true to what you do, and um, and be humble. Wow, and I think that is what uh, the whole uh, the I think that that's what the foundation uh, of achieving a lot in your in your life. And uh, people who are uh, listening to this channel or viewing this on multiple platforms is uh, it's all about making career. If you want to make career. be true to what you do and be humble i think that what goes long way so okay it's wonderful to have you here it was a, such a nice as you said uh, the last word that you use humble i think it was such a humble chat it was a candid and humble chat and thank you for that and thank you for making me feel comfortable as well in the whole whole chat as well so yeah uh, kudos to you and uh, keep inspiring so many people and uh, keep doing the work that you're doing and uh, wish you all the best to make contribution towards making india sporting nation Thank you, thank you, Sid. And uh, you know, look forward to um, having a swim together sometime. Yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Cool. Take Cheers. Care. See you. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and thank you for sharing. But please do subscribe to our channel, Sports Sea Sage, and help us spread the word about Sports Sea. We go with the same handle, Sports Sea Sage, across all the social media platforms and podcasts.